Oh, I see Melanie Howe's mother. Oh, top form, thanks, Injun. Her left leg's still giving her bother, and the stairs are a dreadful strain, you know, because of the sudden vertigo. But yesterday, she managed to hobble down to the corner shop all by herself and back. Oh, that's terrific. Melanie's mother's just recovering from a... from a thing, the Bob. Stroke, if you please, St. John. She insists on the proper term. She hates euphemisms. Not surprisingly, as Melanie's mother was Cambridge's first lady of philology. I had the honour of being supervised by her in my second year as an undergraduate. I have an aunt who had a stroke about a year ago. Um, she was the active sort, too. How is she coping? Well, she was doing splendidly until she had the next one. Now, she's pretty well out of it altogether. My uncle has to do virtually everything for her. But then that's the usual pattern, they said, at the hospital. First a mild stroke, followed by a worse stroke. And if that doesn't do the job, then... Yes, well, Mr. Meadle, I'm sorry for your aunt and for your uncle, but sufficient unto the day. Sufficient unto the day. Yes, of course, uh, that's only one of the possible patterns. There are many cases of complete or more than merely partial recovery, Dennis. If I might, if I might just... Uh, Melanie puts on a remarkably brave front, but don't be led astray. She's an intensely feeling person who knows very well the likely outcome of her mother's. And she's deeply attached to her, as you probably gather. I hope you don't mind my... Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Well, uh, I must unpack my own. Well, not had a ten for tact, I thought. Well, it is his first day, Melanie, my dear. He didn't really understand. I don't think I can stand much more of this. What I really need is some safety pins and a few minutes in the toilet. Yes, of course. You come along with me. Ah, oh, good morning, Melanie, my dear. Good morning, Henry. Uh, good weekend, I trust. Yes, yes thanks, thanks Eddie. Eddie. Better hang on, Eddie. All well with Mother, I trust. Yes, thanks, Eddie. Top form. Good, good. And Fanny and the children? Yes, thanks, Harry. All splendid. Good, good. Oh, and there you are, you two. And Mark, quite composed again, I trust. Oh, well, well Eddie, <coughs> actually, I'm not sure what Mark's caught up and, to. And uh, Mr. Meadle, I don't know uh, which of you have had the chance to meet him yet, uh, but those who haven't can make their separate introductions. In the meanwhile, I'll say a welcome on behalf of us all. <laughs> we are delighted to have you with us. Uh, Yes, you've still got your bicycle clips on, by the way. Oh, yes. Well, perhaps you better take them off. Otherwise, you may give the impression that you're just uh, peddling through. <laughs> yes, well, as you're all here, and a few minutes before the bell, I would like to say a few words, if I may. So, gather ye round, gather ye round. No doubt you all realize that we have an exceptionally high enrollment for the month. The highest in the school's career, as a matter of fact. I say, terrific. Yes, very gratifying. You all know how hard Thomas has worked for this, though he'd loathe to hear me say so. But what I think he wouldn't mind hearing me say is that he, in his turn, knows how hard you've worked. <laughs> but success brings... God! <laughs> Heart. I can't feel his heart. Oh, Lord. I must write a letter. 
right. Letter. Looking out, I think that 400 years ago, when English was exported to America, as it were, that it, it was a completely different sounding language, very much broader. Um, Whoa. Like English, so, you. Question mark. Right. Hello, Eddie. You're in sprightly mood, St. John. Yes. <laughs> well, Friday evening, you know, and I'm off to the theatre tonight with old Mark and Anita. Oh, what are you going to see? Um, oh, that, um, that's Trinberg, I think it is, at the arts. I believe it's an Ibsen. Hedda Gabler, I believe. Oh, is it really? But tell me, the bell's gone already, has it then? I didn't hear it. But then these old ears of mine. Ah, oh, yes, I... well... I let them out a little early, you see. Why? Well, I, I was giving them a lecture on Oxford Colleges with slides to give them the other point of view for once, you see. But I just got going very tight. The old projector broke. Broke? But we only just bought it. It's the newest model. Yes, well, I think that's part of the problem, you know, Eddie. All those extra bits to master. Anyway, one of the colleges went in upside down and wouldn't come out. So I had to abandon technology. Do it all off my own bat, so to speak. You know, reminiscences of my time at the house and anecdotes and so forth. The personal touch. But of course, I ran out of steam a little before the end, I'm afraid. And how many turned up? Oh, about a handful. A handful? Well, well a good handful. But there were meant to be 23 in that group. Yes, well, I think you know that it's being Friday and the sun shining in the back so lovely and the cam jam packed with puns. But the ones who did come were jolly interested, especially that little Italian girl. You know, she's almost midget-sized. She's the one with the wart. If you mean Angelina, she happens to be Greek. Her father's an exceptionally distinguished army officer. Well, really, St. John, I'm afraid Thomas will be very disappointed to hear about all this. He devised this lecture series himself, you know. It's quite an innovation. And if you can't keep attendances up, and you know how important it is to have classes going at least until the bell. Well, oh, hello, my dear. You're finished a bit on the early side, too, I see. Oh, isn't it past five? Well, the bell hasn't gone yet, even in your part of the corridor. And how was your attendance? Oh, uh, nearly a full compliment, Eddie. They're a very keen lot, mostly Germans. In fact, that's why I thought the bell had gone. One of them said he'd heard it. Which one? I think it was Kurt. Mm, I see. My dear, have I told you what I think about your sandals? No, Eddie. I think they're smashing. Well, when I first saw you in them, I wondered whether they were quite comme il faut. Thomas and I had quite a thing about them. But I've been quite one round. I've come to the view that they're most fetching. Or your feet are. Or both. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. And Nigel's still in London, is he, with his uh, co-editress? Yes. Yes, he gets back on Saturday or Sunday. Quite a coincidence, Thomas, seeing them in the train like that. He's hardly moved out of his office for many a month, as you know. And uh, it's all going on all right, then? Yes. Amanda's been absolutely smashing. Quite a surprise, really, because when I first met her at a party a few months ago, I thought she was, well, absolutely charming, of course, but rather, rather feckless, if anything. But it turns out she's got a really good, tough brain. Her boyfriend's being a great help, too. He's invaluable. And you met her at a party? How odd. I had an idea you went to school with her. No, no. With her sister, Serafina. Ah, well. <laughs> yes, but I, I was really asking about the magazine, how that was coming. Oh, well, they finally settled on a title. It's going to be called Reports. Terrific. Oh. 